you need, I think you have to do right behind you, Kate. Some of them have hand up. I know what Kate's going to ask. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, I recall one of the meetings, I think it was the Holy Spirit Center, and a couple of suggestions was made for the authority to conduct a human impact analysis on these right. residential sites. Right. And um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think the response was, well, we will do this human impact study after we have selected a site. Yeah. And some of the audience, you know, you could hear the rumble yeah, because yeah. I think what people I were saying, <laughs> yeah, that they wanted the human impact um, characteristics to be a part of the decision making. But the response that they would take that in consideration after they selected a site, which there was a disconnect there right off. So my question is, um, has there been any changes on that front with the authority? Is there consideration to do the human impact yeah. analysis? Yeah. What yeah, no, I think uh, I think what I what I think I know. Okay, I mean, you know, two authority members can't be in the same room at the same time anymore. It's one of those sort of things where we have to uh, things are sort of very, very sort of uh, handled very carefully. But um, I think in that particular meeting, when that issue came up, uh, I think it pro probably could have been least handled a little bit more objectively so that we sort of all left with the notion that we were going to sort of take into account the impact in a variety of different ways, no matter where the site is, whether it's, uh, I mean, the, I think what we, what I've come to, and I think what uh, I can speak for the group has come to, and that is that this park will have, and if it goes over on the other side of 630, it's going to have an impact on that. Uh, I think there are a lot of great things that are being done and considered for that area outside of the park that I think are going to add greatly to the value of that of that area. Um, how this impacts a community, a neighborhood, those neighborhoods that you have, uh, those are things that we've got. I think that's where we've got to get this round table together and get it talked out. But, um, I'm just speaking for me. I think dude, this is one of those things where it doesn't matter where that park goes. There's a there's a community that's going to be impacted. There are going to be certain people that are impacted more heavily than than, um, than others. But I think to a certain extent, there are probably going to pe be people that are quite happy with where that park goes and if it doesn't impact their property. Um, and there's. There, there are all kinds of things that we have to talk about. And I think from the UAMS perspective, uh, what I certainly hear is that we are part of a community here, UAMS. And I think there is a lot happening right now for UAMS to make sure that its impact in this community is felt in ways that sort of really address health care in a very, very important way and the delivery of better health care uh, for that for all of Little Rock, but certainly in that area. And uh, this is kind of viewed as a, a part of that. Now, I'm, I'm babbling a little bit here, but I think the, the, the answer to your question is I, um, this, this issue of sort of picking the site and then, uh, then we're going to do an impact study. I think probably there's, there's a whole, there's a softening of that, but we're, we're not there in that discussion. But I think that would certainly be part of this year. Yeah, you know, I'm a member of the Fair Park uh, Association, and I live near, but not exactly in any of those areas. Uh, but I certainly know the discussions of my neighbors and so on. And I think the main, one of the big questions is, what is the meaning of fair value? Yes. Yeah. And uh, certainly for myself, uh, uh, three years ago, I bought a house uh, for 125000 If that house were located on that hill over there, it'd be like three times as much. Yes. And so uh, if you were to take my house for 125000 you'd say, OK, that's what you paid for. It. That's what we give you. Uh, where would I live? <laughs> yes, yes. No, I understand. Again, this is, a, this is something I can't answer for you here today. I think the thing that I would say is that there is a sensitivity to this, uh, certainly on the part of the university sponsors that are involved in this project. Uh, and I think somewhere, somehow, that sensitivity has, has to be addressed if we're going to find a, a solution in this that we come out of this as a, as a better community. Mm -hmm.
Um, I'm sounding like a politician right now. <laughs> I am not a politician. I'm looking at your timeline a little bit, 2005, and yeah. looking at the sites. <coughs> that will buy the fact that the all three sites are residential neighborhoods when we had some other blighted areas that were very close to this. Like, if you look at the University Mall area that sat there just basically for years, and, and it's just baffling to me that nobody could um, and this group could think of that. Yes. This would be easy. That well, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I am a bit of a newcomer, okay, to a certain extent. I, I can't understand why the golf course is not a very, very important of that. I mean, that's something we'll, you know, we'll, I mean, if you start looking at the footprint that sort of ultimately we're talking about, and how much space is there? And how much revenue does that bring in for the city? I don't know. It's really not that much. Again, this is just something we're talking about. Yeah. 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 Ye
we did some work on that research, Triad Park, it was in Winston-Salem. Those were, those were more in the downtown area that was uh, not. So maybe we've got something that's really quite unique here, and that's where the discussion, you know, that, that sort of information will take us, take us further into this. Yes, sir. Uh, getting back to the question of fair market value, I mean, we, what is that? But there are so many intangibles attached that we attach to home that you can't put dollar values on, like the cohesiveness of our uh, community. We're friends. We're neighbors. Many of us have been there for decades. I've uh, owned my home for 25 years. There have been those who have been there for 56 years, 60 years, and they have no intention of leaving. They do not want to leave. That's their home. And so there's really not a value that's going to be attractive, you know, not a dollar amount, that is. Um, and then the five-minute rule. Uh, I, my alma mater is UALR. I went to undergrad and grad school there and from the home where I live. And uh, I traveled that hundreds and hundreds of times and also uh, am on adjunct faculty there. But I take... I want to be on time for classes. I want to be on time for, for uh, meetings and that sort of thing. So I always take note of how long it takes me to get there so that I will leave home in time. And I have never traveled in less than eight to nine minutes from my front door to UALR and get parked. So it's not a five-minute distance. It's more than that. I mean, on a weekend at midnight, you might make it five minutes. <laughs> if you obey the law, it's only 30 miles an hour down Fairport. Um, um, actually, the, the questions that are being raised, for those of you who haven't been in some of the areas, I mean, these are, this is the sweet spot of uh, real real estate development. Um, you know, the Fairport area is a sweet spot for
contentious question. <laughs> yeah, what, right, other no, types, these are easy. <laughs> what other types of not. enterprises other than uh, biomedical um, would be included? Well, I, sort of here are the here are the sorts of things that sort of will be part of the park where it ends up. I think there's going to there's going to be a very large training component to the park. Uh, this whole concept of active learning, experiential learning. Uh, if we sort of have the tech skills like the Plasky Techs and sort of have that biological component, this will be an obvious place for them to have a, a training facility and an opportunity to to uh, sort of get real experience for training for people, for, in, for them to in turn to build resumes, do that sort of thing. I think there will be, you know, be there will certainly be places, bank components to that, places places for, for bank. There has been the discussion of elder care uh, component. Uh, that would be sort of part of what would go in there. Uh, to a certain extent, it might represent uh, opportunities for our Institute for Aging here to have uh, some sort of interaction with the elder care facilities that are there. And, uh, sort of How about communications technology, those kinds of uh, Yes, software. Uh, yeah, any, any sort of high tech, uh, I don't know, Electronics, maybe there may be elements of that to get into. The, it's it's just not going to be um, you know not going to be barber shops and, and nail salons and that sort of thing. It's going to be there's going to be some type of uh, this man. And you've mentioned that more um, research needs to be done um, for the park's development. On your timeline, 2006, you have that study of research cards, best practices, and things like that were conducted. Were these things not taken into consideration when you were doing research on um, um, the success of other research parks? Well, we've looked, I mean, we looked at the success of other research parks. We actually visited, uh, I didn't personally, but uh, we were visited by some of the people that were doing the research at that time. And uh, again, uh, sort of what we're working off of was data that dealt with the inventory of research was here, what park size would, would be necessary to take full advantage of the research the large uh, to attract companies here to, uh, to create the kind of economic development uh, inner opportunities that, that they had planned on. I think we collected as much data as we could. I think what we're into now is basically, I think, really getting into the nitty-gritty of uh, sort of getting that input that we need from the community that uh, might involve additional data that, you know, let's let's put some straw in out there to sort of talk about what is working what is And that's another, I'm sorry, that's another question I have too as well. Um, uh, you mentioned about um, that you all are sensitive and that you want to come to the table and talk to the community. How uh, heavy is the community's voice in your decision um, when you choose a site location? Well, I think it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious that that uh, that this is this is going to be a difficult issue for all of us. So there's, uh, I think there's got to be some sort of common voice element put together with the right kind of community leaders in this. Uh, I think those are going to be meetings that will have at least two of the park board members on it. Those will all be public meetings and opportunities to really discuss this in a way that uh, I think we're all going to learn from it. Certainly the reporters will have a field day with it. So, uh, I'm happy to take questions until we run out of air. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> After having studied a lot of American history and how the United States of America was formed and the reasons that it was a tiny bunch of ragtag farmers and they broke away from England for certain reasons. Yeah. And when they formed this country, they made property rights something that was very sacred to us. And I don't see how if I decide I want to build a research park that I have a right to go to this group of people and say, I'm going to take your homes away from you. Now I can come to you and say, I can offer you so many million dollars, and, and you can take that or leave it, and if you don't want to, then I have to go find another spot. But I can't see in the United States and the system of government that we set up anyone having the right to force anyone out of their <coughs> especially their personal home. And 
I just don't seem to hear much discussion about that, but it seems to me that in today's society we're almost returning to a feudalistic society where a few wealthy people control where I live and what I do. Before you ask that, Douglas, let me close it out for those of you that are ready to head back to your places of business. And this is to have and let me appreciate you say how much we appreciate your candor. And then for those who are able to stay and ask more questions, be willing to speak. So please stay. But anybody else that wants to be I agree with you. I mean, it's um, it, this is this is I don't know. Kind of looking at this as a economic <coughs> development community uh, effort of some sort, and I don't know what that means to the individual, especially those individuals that are displaced from their homes. Um, I don't have a good answer for you, but uh, um, I don't know. In the end. Maybe we find a way. I don't, you know, I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm the, as people know, I'm the guy who's always trying to make make sure it happens so that everybody walks out of the room feeling like we've accomplished something. Uh, at this point, I think we're still in the process of understanding what we've got to accomplish. There are some key issues. You raised a very, very good good one. Are we going to have to even use eminent domain in this? I, I'm sure the numbers are such that there's probably and and the positions are such that. That, that may be something that that does happen. I just don't know. Uh, maybe in the end we end up in the North Little Rock for all I know. So. Yes, ma'am. I sort of have a, a, a big picture question along the oh, way. Like we're sick, you know, we're in the flagship institution that is about health care and health care for the population. Right. I understand the big picture. I, I consume research. I use research. I understand that. But how do you balance that in the face of the largest displacement of people since 630 was built? And we know when we, that your environment, your neighborhood, a lack of investment in your neighborhood or displacement from your neighborhood, particularly forced, has an impact on your health and the health of your family. Where is that? Look in the crystal ball. What yeah, no, I, listen, it's a, that's a tough question to answer. Um, you know, I, that may trickle down in 25 years or 30 years or so. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Did, you know. did 630 work out okay? I don't know. Well, um, that's debatable. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. We're still yeah. talking about it. Anyway. Yeah. Um, no one feels you know, good about it. Sort of, it's sort of divided uh, the city. Literally. And created uh, uh, physical boundaries that that, uh, you know, that weren't there before. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, I think I think if if the community is strong enough in this, um, then the institutions that are involved in this are fair enough in this that we'll figure out some way to make this work. Maybe it's not in those three sites. I don't know. I just don't. I just don't have. My, you know, I don't have a crystal ball to, to, to say that. I know I'm not answering your question, but it's probably not answerable. But um, the health of the community. Um, quite frankly, I think UAMS is here and would love nothing more than to sort of make that uh, a laboratory for creating a very healthy community. Um, sort of what it's doing in the communities here and some measurable, tangible improvement in the health of a region as a result of the intervention of the university. How do we, how do, we do that? And I guess I would add not just, not those who are left in the surrounding area. If, if, if you use eminent domain and you, have, and you end up displacing people, what happens to those people? Right. And we asked that question to our human impact guy, and he said, I don't know, never looked at that. Who's the human impact? Well, the person that um, Mary Good said in response to Joyce when she raised the question about human impact was Charles Dilts, but that's not his area. She implied that he was to address that issue. And has no experience in it.
University system has a great resource available to do a human impact study because we have anthropologists and sociologists at both institutions. And I know last year that uh, Dr. Drummond from UALR was recruited to UAMS to work as an anthropologist here. I don't know what she's doing here. I don't know specifically what she's doing here. But it, she's a medical anthropologist, and she was my mentor in grad school, so I know that she's very bright and knows about how to do that sort of study. And there are Dr. Flynn at UALR is a renowned anthropologist. 
Dr. Jeffrey Nash is a renowned sociologist. Or an anthropologist going to give us the answer that we want? I mean, I'm... I'm well, they're eminently qualified what to... What makes this tough, what makes this tough is, um, is sort of how do, how do we quantify sort of this, this impact issue? I mean, it, for, for a lot of people, it's what boils down to dollars and cents, but then there are those intangibles that we're never going to get past. Um, both disciplines can do quantitative and qualitative. Okay. All they, right. The, well, the anthropologist is mostly quantitative. Is However, the sociologist is mostly so the, quantitative. So the university community outreach people be part of some sort of process that allows the organization of that? I mean, I think there's probably data that has been collected. Uh, well, I, you know, I think you could have a team that would be an interdisciplinary team. Uh -huh. yeah. But, you know, you're paying a lot of money to an engineer to assess these sides, but you and you have this ten thousand dollar consultant who's looking at what is going to make the research part most successful. But we have yet to see any investment in trying to do that human impact assessment other than, you know, telling the community what, to bring okay. the data to them or you know, there's no one what, what would an RFP from sort of informed community outreach uh, sort of seeing this problem, what sort of what would an RFP look like for that? Is that something that that Kate, your group or you guys could sort of I mean, you could put, put together? Out. I think and could just put it put down in a way that says, I work with this you. is what yeah. needs to be done. It's going to take it's going to take a lot of money. I mean, I can this tell point, you, we let's, have let's students. Let's, let's just make we that have part students of in this in this room who took our class, and we were not able to let them go door to door because. I understand. I understand. But if we hired people who might be former students, you know, I mean, I think that there are ways to get at those data better that then we could in a one semester class and partnering with people at UAOR. There are many people in this community who it doesn't have to be us that could get better information than somebody coming in from outside who's really not doesn't have the expertise to make those issues. I mean, if that expertise is available, just like we're engaging in a, an architectural engineering firm to sort of give us the kind of the, just the physical parameters of this, why not identify through an RFP someone that can step up and, and define yeah, those those and those pieces impact. that we need in addition to this, mm -hmm. and basically say we're not going to move forward until we finish. Study to whatever. I think, I think one of the challenges you have is that you don't have anybody on your board who can evaluate what that means. I mean, you can get the data back, I think, that would tell you there, okay, there are 70% of the people in this neighborhood, uh, homes in this neighborhood are owner occupied. Well, where's the cutoff? Is 70% too many? I mean, what, that, what's it going to be? Is that, is, that, is that the way you're defining it? That's part of it. I mean, that was and one of the things that you were question. saying yeah. is, you know, we need to know these I'm things. They're the quantitative. I'm just raw numbers here, but that human element is much more than. Well, I think that gets well, to the end yeah, of the aspects that, of doing that's interviews. study, you know, culture and what, or so, culture anthropologists, the, the values that people place on their culture, you know, the shared values, shared belief systems, uh, politics, religion, all of that enters in into any, any, uh, Culture. Uh, there's elements that are in, that are uh, enjoyed by all and, and and shared by all in a particular culture. That's what defines the culture. And losing that is is a really serious thing, you know. Especially when when they don't want to be broken up. You see this in in, in the uh, during the colonial times you know, where. Uh, like the the Dutch or, or whomever would go into a foreign land, you know, and just plant themselves there and take take from these and destroy. It's a very similar situation if you really think about it. And um, but I think that if you combine sociology and, and insight, which is more um, quantitative, with the anthropology more qualitative, then you would get a good idea of the impact from talking, it, there would be an ethnographic study most likely where they would go into the areas and, and interview people and
can also bring in their scholarship to uh, <coughs> discover and be able to recommend uh, from, from what the ethnographic research reveals. Well, maybe that's one of those things that we do get sort of in front of the board. Uh, I mean, it just seems to me that there's got to be some sort of um, opportunity to, I won't call it quantify, but to sort of really bring the pieces into that. that you know, people that involve, that are involved with the community. I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a biologist, so my life's inside of a cell. It's real easy inside of a cell. But these, these communities actually sort of need, uh, need someone, we need some level of expertise that the community is going to feel represents a true expression of this, this human impact. There's another option too, but not displace people. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Right. So, well, the, the big <laughs> research parks that do this go out in the interlands, go out to the near the, air, near the airport where they find a big space. And they set up there and they just, you know, build it, they come. That's what's happening. They take it. Yeah. Or build up and not out. You know, why can't you build up and, and people? Is there some reason why different entities, these different companies can't buy a couple of floors and outfit them like they want to in a high rise? I think there's a better opportunities between here and downtown. Right? Right. And, right. And is the dark cable Wait, or whatever out optics run downtown? Does it also extend down? I think, it comes, I think it comes up 30. Up 30 from where? Um, you know how From 30 to 630? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 630 to 30 is that where it is, where it stops. I don't know. It's going, from, it's going to Texas from here. It's kind of coming down. It's actually It's not the How much you have to pay for the land? It's, it's, it's for the whole 30 acres, for 272 structures, that's about 33000 a piece. That's like getting your car totaled out, and then you can't buy a car for what you get. Right. You're getting the picture now. I was told they had to clear the whole area. It wasn't, you can, because you have to lay the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Theoretically, you could have a, a barren land for however long it takes to build. Yeah. Yes. There's another site I wanted to talk about too. Is the first T site, just just south of uh, Asher and uh, right. University. Yeah, they, they, they may be a, that also may be an option. Mm -hmm. so I think off the golf course there, but they they may be an opportunity to relocate their their golf course to a different location and revitalize that program. Mm -hmm. That could be something we look at as well. There's so a one deal, one deal you're done. And there's that Hodges site at 430 and 30 that's available. Yeah. Again, this. Uh, we need a I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think the more people are getting, there's going to be a lot of ideas. Yeah. I mean, in the end, talk, we, we just need to keep talking. Yeah. And we're going to keep talking. Yeah. And we're going to talk this one into the ground, literally. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very good guitar player. Is there any player. real, um, I talked did to the chancellors make any real impact on the board? I hope they did, yes. Uh, I talked to the same very good you talked to, and basically we've decided it's going to be a committee that's going to be one that will uh, have at least two members of the board on it. So. After the oh, yeah. site has been selected. Well, now we're the she did say that meeting. she was going to put the plan together by the end of yeah. this week to put that group together and she's got moving in that. Yes, that's what she's doing. That, that was what she proposed to do, is to put something together. And as we were sort of leaving the table, there was discussion about this needs to be a public uh, either task force or board, which means it needs to have at least two board members on it. Well, it's not what she said. But Laura. at any rate, she also said that it needs to happen quickly, mm -hmm. that, the, that the uncertainty needs to be over, which well, is, would be in that. direct opposition we can't go to fast. deliberate. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can't go fast enough. So, so um, it just seems to me there's, you know, there we is, cannot there move is, fast enough. There to is the optimistic, the and let's all get together, look, and then there's what's probably never really going to happen. On the is she going? Is she pushing because of this thing in here? Well, the, that, whole, that whole sort of federal legislation was no, Karen uh, sort of signed by Obama. She's, now, she started up a what we're waiting for is the year last year. Appropriated for The only point that I wanted to make there with that is that there is certainly a component that's coming from the tax side of it, but there is a greater component that's going to come from other sources that comes to the region where those taxpayers are paying their taxes, but they're part of this as well. Um, I don't know, with regard to your comment, I just cannot agree with you. I think you're just way off base there, way off base, so just because, you know, we're well, all the, the, friends the, are good. Yeah. So what is the committee that we're talking about? Well, it has not been formed yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Right over my head. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that was after the meeting was over that she said that? No, no. She said, she said right at the end of the meeting. Basically, she said right at the end of the meeting when I approached her after the meeting right before she left the building I asked her about the committee when she was planning to put that together and she said after the site has been selected yeah. well I certainly anticipate that we're going to see something before the next meeting and we won't hear about site selection for I don't say at least another two months I thought that would be what would be reported at the next meeting. Yeah. The other, the other question I have about that is who's going to choose, I mean, is the community going to get to decide who represents them? Mm -hmm. Which is the way I think that's, a, no, that's a great question. I mean, I'm, just sort of back to the, the point that uh, was being made here. Um, I think the, the key, I think, with that, whatever that community group, that task force, whatever it's going to be in a subcommittee, if you will, how those community leaders are chosen, I think. So probably the neighborhood leadership, I wouldn't be surprised if you know, you're on that committee, and, um, and from the other neighborhoods that are involved in this, I think. But you do see that as being chosen by the community as opposed to, I think it's not a good idea no, no, for, I don't, I for the authority that. to choose those people would not. I think, well, I think there is probably going to be some sort of statement that says we need representation from the community X, Y, and Z in this process. Uh, maybe we need, um, you know, Kraft and Tull to be there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there is, maybe it's, there's a place for the, the, uh, the uh, uh, people that are doing the economic impact work. I, I just don't see this as happening quickly or this whole thing sort of coming to, to some big crescendo uh, that quickly. I just don't see it. I just I think the Chancellor, our Chancellor wants to make sure this is done right. Yeah, that's I, mean, I was I, wondering how much will he be willing to put his foot down because it looks like something's going to be real quick out because it would be an awful crisis. Well, I, I, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I just want to make a comment. I think it would really work well if the other board members would make motions so that it would be strict clarification as yeah. to what's mm -hmm. been decided upon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And that way we know what's yes. been decided Because I heard mm -hmm. her say, and I didn't hear her that. under the breath, but you know, she <coughs> talks and rambles around. Mm -hmm. I heard her imply it, but it wasn't just clear. Formalized. Yeah. 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 It was formal. But if a board member should make a motion, there was probably the one omission there from that last meeting that wasn't sort of captured in a motion. Mike, I'm going to thank you so much. I'm calling you. And I have a vote. Everybody vote. Yeah, we got a vote. I thought it was a great idea. Thank you. 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 It's like sometimes we'll come back, like you're choosing this, or there's this discussion of how this is going to happen, how this community, you know, group is going to happen, is happening between meetings. There is very, very little discussion. You got somebody over the community. Well, I mean, to a certain, you know, Jay is uh, kind of uh, one of those people that sort of connects to a number of different parts of this. And, yeah, that's uh, how it comes out. I think to a certain extent, what. Well, what I think, for, I think the Charlie Dilks thing was was essentially, um, you know, it's, it was clear the pushback was strong, and it was one of those where there needs, needed to be some, some additional sort of input, some independent uh, voice that come in, comes into this. And he was there when we were collecting sort of the data early on, when they were putting together information early on. He was the logical one to bring back and spin through this. Now, what I heard today uh, is, you know, he's he's been he's put a lot of these parks together, but he's, I don't think he's put any up in a residential area. That's what I think I'm hearing. Did he participate in the choosing of the sites? Did he do the study? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I think you he was. You say that you didn't understand why War Memorial was wasn't considered. I thought no, I heard no, you say that. No, no, I, it's, it, it, I think it baffles everybody. Why, why, uh, why War Memorial is not considered? But then again, you know, this is this is this is this is, this is, this is Arkansas. And, you know, Dixon Flex said it wasn't big enough. Well, he said it was actually smaller than your, the library. Your footprints. Um, I don't. know, This is one. You know, don't you have to sort of zone things to build certain things? And what well, before you before you actually build, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> absent I resistance. Is not question. It's, it's very disturbing to me to see it's almost like the, the city is taking this leadership role and just running over, over the individuals and not really taking, you know, like just like with the thing downtown with the veterans. It's the same, to me, it's the same kind of process. You're not really taking the individual into account when you make the decision to spend. Millions and millions of dollars. It's just okay. We made this. We just spent this money. This is what we wanted to do. And you got to back up and start looking at what they talk about the human cost. And uh, I guess being an employee here and having had a lot of interaction in terms of being part of certain groups, not not one at that level of authority. It's interesting that it's almost like a reaction on the part of UALR and UAMS as opposed to proaction in terms of you know. When Talking about it. yes. it's, it's like you come yes. to the table in, in terms yes. of yes. I mean, that, they're spot on. I think it is a reaction. It was a reaction. Uh, and it was when we were first putting this thing together, that's what I sort of mentioned uh, to the members of my body, because <coughs> we talk about the progress of park moving through the various sort of uh, research steps that it was doing, and that is that at some point there is going to be a community component to this that is going to be the real, I mean, the really hard part of this. How so big is your biovention? My biovention building is about 17,000 square feet. So it's like one block, two blocks? Uh, it's uh, about maybe a quarter, I mean, it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a footprint <laughs> that's hard to describe. It's maybe a quarter of a block. One so it's not even a whole block? No. Okay. no. I mean, it, any of you are more than welcome to come by. We just we just finished out. We just finished spending some of your tax dollars to to uh, fix it up, and it's just 
just very nice. And it's full. It's full of fine young companies that are growing and need a place to go to. The other thing I'd like to add is just a comment because I was thinking about this as possibly with um, some of my family members that are in community development. It's very important to do this if you, to, for the research part to be successful wherever you, wherever it ends up going, for a community to be engaged and be supportive of it. Companies, new startup companies are not going to want to come in a hotbed of companies. Yeah, absolutely. And no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Start up their fledgling company. There's, there's got to be an equilibrium hit in this somewhere that, uh, that we've worked from and that we're all, probably none of us are going to be completely entirely happy, but we are got to work for some equilibrium and then build off of that. But it's one that we all feel like we've been, we've fairly addressed the issue and we've come up with, with a choice that the community, the university, and uh, sort of the commercialization components of this can it may not go on those three sides. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, again, I'm the, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I am the voice in the, in the, in the wilderness here on this one, but, uh, but I think there is, there is every effort sort of being made by the <coughs> to work this thing through. It just is not happening at a rate that uh, I think the community wants, and to a certain extent has concluded, has been an inclusive process. I think uh, that the And we're in that, we're entering that door, right? Yeah. I was just thinking about um, Mary Goods. I mean, I know she's a very prominent and powerful person, and she was put in that position with a lot of backing, but I don't think she's the right person to do yeah. yeah, I know, but in terms of what you're dealing with right now. Yeah, it's, um, I think, again, there's just got to be a lot of, a lot of discussion. With so this. what's the recourse for the taxpayers to deal with? I mean, you got gifts of this person. It's just not right. What can we do? I don't know. I, I've got to be damned if I say something. Damn if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just something I think that uh, as a group, the community has to figure out what it means. Is it the governor? Is it, is it, the, the, is it Stola? Is it who's so appointed by Julia? Yeah, uh, uh, Chancellor Andrews. She was a. She, I don't know how she was appointed, actually. Uh, <coughs> So whoever appointed her, we would go to them and say, you need to reconsider your appointment. No. Do you have a sense that the board heard what the chancellors were saying? I mean, do you have any sense that they... I think so. No, absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, I think what you heard from Dan Ron was that let's, uh, let's open this thing up mm -hmm. and sort of reassess yeah. the issues related to location. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what you heard from Joel Anderson was uh, essentially, I think, interested in seeing that university district uh, in some way properly uh, uh, moved forward and uh, offered suggestions on how to do that. Suggestions on at right. least the, the including the but community as part of that process. Board yes. Made an impact. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked with anyone except very good after the meeting about, you know, getting this, uh, this support put together. So. So the, slow, the slowing down and considering these things is in contrast with Craft Intel coming back on June 20th with their next round of mm -hmm. recommendations on financials and everything that you're paying them to do what, their consulting you know, for. What, what, they, what they will do is a, is a recommendation based strictly on architectural engineering. Right. And I mean, I've heard Vixen Flake say that he needs to be mindful of taxpayer money and not use too much on these consults. So if we're considering other sites, we're still moving forward with paying the consultants. I think basically to somewhere, somehow, we've got to be, take this inclusive component and really start with that. Uh, and there might be a recommendation that comes in here, but that's, you know, that recommendation is here. Um, I think we get, we get uh, the community component of this going as quickly as we can. I, I would have anticipated that Mary Good has probably got some things pulled together here. Uh, I haven't been contacted yet, but someone else. Mike, what's really sad about this process at this point to me is that there's some real good outcomes of research parks. And they can and there's been some research parks that have partnered with communities to build business incubators for have nail salons and beauty salons and grocery stores in the research parks. 
Acknowledged it. Yeah, he acknowledged at the last, uh, not the last meeting, the one before at uh, Willie Hinton, that that was correct. That was correct. That it was not part of the original.